Hello and welcome to video 2 of our course on converting paper-based data to electronic data using AP data. My name is Wilfred Ngwa. In video 1, I gave you an overview of this course. In this video, I will be providing details on how to get started with AP data, as well as provide details on the practical exercise we shall be working with. We will also look at what a data dictionary or codebook is and how to create one. Please check the overview section to download all course material if you are watching from the Epiguider website or the first comment on this video if you are watching on YouTube. Without wasting any more time, let's get started. In video 1, we define Epidata as a group of applications used in combination for creating documented data structures and analysis of quantitative data. These group of applications which are used in combination are Epidata Manager, Epidata Entry Client, and Epidata Analysis, which we shall see later in much detail. To install Epidata, go to www.epidata.dk. Click on the Download tab and scroll down to the Windows All-in-One Installer. Click on it and choose a location on your computer where you would like to save the application. The application is pretty small, just about 12.9 megabytes, and so the download process should be fast. Once the download process is complete, locate the folder where you saved your file and double click on it to install. A pop up box, as shown on the down left corner of the screen, comes up. Click on Yes. To proceed. At this point, you will have to accept the software license agreement and click on Next to proceed. Select a folder where you want the software installed on your computer. By default, it is installed in the program files in drive C of your computer. Click on Next to proceed. Select the components you want to have installed on your computer. For now, we can leave all the components. It is important to note here that if you are occupying a management position with data encoders, you might want to install only the AP Data Entry Client for your data encoders. This can prevent them from making any modifications to your created data entry forms without your knowledge, which could result in messing up the forms. That said, click on Next to proceed. Leave the Start menu folder as it is and click on Next to proceed. If you would like Epidata to create desktop shortcuts for you, leave the default settings and click on Next. Epidata now gives you a summary of what will be installed on your computer. And if you are happy with it, click on Install. If the contrary is true, click on Back to make modifications. The installation process now runs and an information menu comes up providing you with information on contact and learning resources which you can explore on the AP Data website as well. Click on Next to proceed. This now brings you to the final page and you can click on Finish to complete your installation process. On your desktop, you should see the following applications displayed if you did your installation properly. I presume you are wondering why we have four applications instead of three. Don't worry. We will go into the details as we proceed. Let's take a look at the exercise used in this course. You have just been hired as the new monitoring and evaluation advisor for a non-communicable disease project in Cameroon. The major focus of the project is the piloting of a model of care for management of diabetes and hypertension in primary healthcare facilities, which will be led by nurses. The project is to run from January 2020 to December 2022. You have been provided with the displayed data form which will be used by nurses in the health facilities to create a database for capturing patient information filled in by nurses in five pre-selected health facilities. Use Epidata to create this database. 
Let us now have an understanding of the data form. The first part is the demographic section where the nurses are expected to fill in the non-communicable disease number, the sex of the patient, the phone number, date of birth, diagnosis, which according to the exercise could be either diabetes or hypertension or both, and the date the diagnosis was made. The second part is the visit section, which permits the nurses to collect data on vital parameters during each patient visit to the health facility. The third part has information on the medication given during each patient visit to the health facility and the dose given. The last part has the code for the medications to make filling in of the forms easy for nurses. Let's now have a look at the data dictionary or code book. A data dictionary is a collection of names, definitions, and attributes about data elements that have been used or captured in a database, information system, or part of a research project. It describes the meaning and purposes of data elements within the context of a project and provides guidance on interpretation, accepted meanings, and representation. I have here displayed an extract from the data dictionary used in this course. As you can see, the first column represents the variable name. In an Excel export, this is what will appear as headers. You therefore want to keep it as short as possible, but yet easy to understand what it represents. The next column is the label. This is what the data encoder or clock will see on the database when entering data. The next column is the variable type, which is indicative of the kind of data to be input. The last column is the explanation column, which provides details about the variable. All of these will start making more sense when we begin the designing of our form next week. We are at the end of this lesson. Next week, we will look at the AP Data Manager user interface. Ensure to have AP Data installed on your computer. Also take out some time to download and have a look at the materials for this course. Don't forget to subscribe and share so that others can benefit as well. Bye for now.